I don't think if the lights can stay on, I can turn off my linear piston air pump and run a month without no worries. I can go on vacation and come back and my fish will be still fine. Now that's where you want to come to, which is uh, where you want what I mean by balance. That's where you want to be when you've achieved balance. Balance is not something that can be achieved over days or weeks. This tank has been established for almost a year now. You can go back and look at the video where I set this up. I will set up another one down below. These will purchase at the same time. I will do an unboxing for you guys with better lighting so you can see my face clearly. And uh, we will set up a underground filter properly. And uh, we will talk about how we can set up a balanced aquarium and how we can achieve balance long term in our aquariums and how we can come off of these life support systems that we heavily depend on to keep our fish alive so that if at some point the life support system were to malfunction or to fail your fish are not gonna die and you have some leeway and some uh, flexibility what's going on everybody it's your boy Malik welcome back to Malik's water garden in today's video we're gonna look at what a balanced aquarium is and this is gonna get the conversation started on how we can achieve balance in our aquariums so this video is gonna be more of a basic introduction to what a balanced aquarium is and why we should strive to achieve balance in our aquariums if you're new here I highly suggest you subscribe down below and hit that notification icon so you get updated when the rest of this video series gets uploaded as well as many other related content if you're a regular subscriber thank you so much for your subscription if you find value in this type of videos and my channel please share it with the rest of your networks like Facebook Instagram and Twitter and help me grow the channel thank you so much for your support everyone I love you all let's get into this video what's going on everybody welcome back to Malik's water garden in today's video we're gonna look at what a balanced aquarium is now in this tank I have quite a bit of fish it's very heavily populated I haven't done a water change in here in almost three months the nitrates are about 80 parts per million now and I can re really let this go for another week or two without a concern of my nitrates nitrate spiking although the nitrates are high at this point and I am going to do a water change right after making this video the nitrate levels are not going to spike like this nitrate accumulation has happened over three months and even that is not all nitrates either some of it is uh, accumulated solids because I haven't done an actual water change and due to evaporation some of the solid content has also accumulated in the tank so if I were to do an API test kit it would say my nitrates are 80 parts per million the TDS is 264 parts per million and the source water is at about 180 parts per million so when you do the math you're looking at somewhere at, at about 80 parts per million total nitrate and that's what my TDI uh, a API test kit has also shown me now why am I not worried when I'm why am I not panicking and why am I not doing a water change the reason for that is these tanks are so well balanced that it is not dependent on the life support systems to keep these fish alive what do I mean by that so at some point if my filters were to stop working the fish would not gas out and die within the next day I will show you a video clip of a tank on the other side of the fish room where the filters were clogged up the water level dropped below the lift tube for the jet lift of the Madden filter so there was no water coming into the tank through the filter the both the hang on the back filters were the intake sponges were clogged so there was no water flowing into the tank through that so there was no filtration happening and uh, I noticed this about a week ago and I filmed it last night before I did the water change because I just haven't gone around to doing the water change and I wasn't concerned about it although this tank co contains a lot of my valuable fish it has uh, my only Rio Autobapo angel fish quite large uh, as a gift I love that guy I'm not trying to lose any of these fish the nitrates in there were the total dissolved solids was 245 parts per million when I did the water change and the nitrates were about maybe 65 parts per million okay so the tank is so well balanced that even though I knew that the life support system had stopped working for over a week the hang on the backs 
were getting clogged up and it had finally clogged and stopped working for about five or six days when I did the video yesterday and I uh, did the water change finally last night. Why was I not concerned and how did I, my, my fish not gas out and die? I'm going to tell you a little story about something that happened recently. I uh, had a power outage which doesn't really happen in this neighborhood. It's the first power outage in 10 years. And uh, I'm in a very, very high tax paying neighborhood. So uh, because of that, the systems are really good around these neighborhoods. They're, the garbage gets picked up on time, the power never goes out, there's flowers being hung on the side of the street every season. And uh, they remove that in the Christmas, they put out Christmas trees on the side of the street, all that good jazz. So it's a really nice neighborhood. And because of that, the power never goes out. And if it does, it really comes back really quickly. So I'm not concerned about that. I don't have a backup generator. But when the power did go out, I got an email alert. I was in my garden. Comment below and let me know if you want to see an update on my garden. And uh, subscribe if you haven't. So you get updated when those videos come out. So I'm up in my garden. And uh, I get an email alert. I run downstairs. I panic. Look through all the tanks. Then I really thought to myself. I sat down, you know, and uh, took a moment took a deep breath if my power didn't come on for two days let's say 48 hours would my fish really start dying in my facility I don't think so I'm gonna tell you a little story about something that happened a week ago I actually was doing water changes this is actually two weeks ago now and uh, I was doing water changes in my zebra Echo tank and I noticed that the air coming into the tank was turned off so because it was getting too hot in the top levels, in the summer I usually remove the power heads from the top tanks. So they were in one of the top tanks that was in the middle of the room, so it was one of the warmest tanks. So the power head was making the tank quite warm, so I had to remove the power head. I removed the power head almost a month ago, and I noticed that the air had been turned off. So I'm pretty sure the air had been turned off before that, and uh, I probably was doing some routine maintenance, and I forgot to turn the air back on. Now. For two weeks, at least, there was no air going into the tank. There was no power head. So there was no water movement. There was no filtration. I checked the TDS. Somehow, the TDS didn't spike. So everything was fine. I was looking into the tank. I was feeding them. And I didn't notice at all because the outlets for the, the sponge filters are right on the top. And usually, it's like in the corners. And like, it's not like the most visible place and I look for the fish I look at the fish if the fish are fine I'm not concerned I even have my super wet in there I fed him so many times like every day in that two weeks and uh, <laughs> I didn't notice that the filter was turned off and the air was turned off and I removed the power head so they had no water movement for over two weeks definitely and uh, I didn't lose any fish I actually counted them because I was so worried and panicked but then I realized that that tank is so well balanced that it could go a whole month or six months without it, the, these tanks in my aquarium room don't require these life support systems to keep my fish alive is what I'm trying to say um, so this is something you need to really consider in your own setup I'm not saying to stop using filters or to stop using technology to keep your life support systems alive or to keep your fish alive or to run your life support systems what I'm saying is to to have a life support system that is not dependent he solely on technology. So have things that are natural in your tank, that are not solely dependent on one technology. Have backups, but at the same time, don't depend on these things. Like have a backup generator, definitely. I'm actually looking at getting a backup generator when I get to the new facility. So in the next couple of years, when we are in the new facility, God willing, that's one of the first things I'm probably gonna get is a backup generator. I'm not too worried about backup generators in this neighborhood that I'm in because of how good the electrical company is in this neighborhood and uh, because if it's a high tax paying neighborhood it definitely does make a huge difference on the services that you receive. So I like being in that type of neighborhood. I've always lived in these type of neighborhoods since I've moved out of my parents house because of these type of advantages. Now having said that, don't solely depend on your life support systems. In upcoming videos, we are going to set up an underground filter for the tank below here. So we are going to get that conversation started. And uh, we'll do a proper unboxing video. I know you guys complained about uh, my face not being clear on the last unboxing video, which was done a year ago almost. 
which is when I bought these. These are the underground filters I'm using. Uh, not paid advertisement. I paid money and bought these. But if uh, Penplax wants to reach out to me and send some product, I would be gladly willing to test them for them for you guys because I use a lot of uh, their products and uh, it's one of the companies I actually like buying product from. So Penplax, holler at your boy. And uh, so we're going to unbox this in a coming video. Subscribe down below and stay tuned for that. And we're going to set up one of these underground filters properly. There's several ways of setting this up and there's a proper way of doing it which will give you the most benefit out of your underground filter. These filters are designed to work for nitrification as well as denitrification. So it does both nitrification and denitrification. And you do not have to clean any sponges or take it apart. These can run five to 10 years without any maintenance. So that's one of the benefits of underground filters. And as it gets established, the denitrification process becomes much better. And as time passes, it becomes a really good denitrification filter. Now, that does not mean you don't have to do water, water changes in these tanks. You still have to do water changes in these tanks. That does not mean that you get to neglect them and let them go. But you can clearly see after three months of neglect, this tank has not grown in the algae. The fish are doing completely well. The water is crystal clear, although it does have a, a little bit of higher nitrate content. Uh, it doesn't have any ammonia or nitrites, which is usually the case with most set up established aquariums you shouldn't have nitrate uh, ammonia or nitrite spikes but your nitrates can spike as time passes now having plants definitely helps i'm going to highlight a channel which is a uh, father fish something of someone i came across recently i really like his channel so check his channel out i'll put a link to it down below and uh check out some of the videos where he talks about keeping fish without these life support systems and achieving balance if you also watch my video of Jan the Discus Man's fish room, he also talks about balance. Now these guys have been keeping fish since the 50s and 60s. In those times, we didn't have any of these life support systems. I was born in 1980. I was a very sickly child and uh, my parents had aquariums in their living room. And a lot of the aquariums my dad had in the living room had fluorescent lights and they did have air pumps. And some of the really nice display tanks did have underground filters. So some of the first tanks that I remember seeing in my house, my parents' house, did have underground filters. I got my first aquarium when I was three. None of my aquariums had filters. My first angel fish tank, which was in my bedroom, I had an angel fish tank. I was seven years old. So this was my seven year birthday present, which was a 35 gallon aquarium. And I got a pair of angel fish, black marble. We'll talk about that in a coming video so stay tuned and subscribe and hit that notification icon because you do not want to miss that video so i got these angel fish i was seven years old and they were in a tank in my dark bedroom it wasn't dark dark but it was like i had a window on it so it got like a few hours of light through the window so i had moss growing in there i had a piece of slate it was a bare bottom tank it had a pair of angel fish didn't have a filter didn't have heaters didn't have any air pumps these two angel fish bred so many times and i grew the fry in the tank i grew out hundreds and hundreds of fry in that tank and my dad was so impressed with me seeing how successful i was breeding angel fish in my bedroom in a 35 gallon tank which was about that big and i had two fish in there piece of slate some moss that was it and so i would do a water change every three to five days because they didn't have a filter so the poop would accumulate a little bit and especially when they had fry, so I would have to do regular water changes every two to three days. I'd come home from school. And the rule was I had to do all my homework before I got to do water changes. So I had, I studied really hard actually because I loved taking care of my fish tank. So I had to do my homework and then do my water changes. And I remember doing this very distinctly actually. And I was a good kid, you know, growing up. I was a, I was a, not the most obedient kid, but I was good in those things. I was good in taking care of my animals. I was good in my schoolwork. Uh, I listened to uh, my parents in terms of those things, you know? So anyways, uh, so I remember doing that and didn't have any filters. I remember my first love with aquariums actually happened, not in my own house, but at my pediatrician's house. Like I said, I was a very sickly child and I was at the doctor quite often. And uh, I used to go to this uh, lady pediatrician that had an office in her house. So her office, was in a sunroom it's probably the size of this apartment maybe maybe not the entire apartment but this living room uh or fish room and uh it was 
maybe seven eight hundred square feet maybe a thousand at best and she had a wall on one side and three sides the three walls were all floor to ceiling glass and some of them could be open and they were all like they all each side had a display aquarium all around it so just about 30 or 40 aquariums like these all planted very well established uh, what you would call a naturalistic aquascaped aquarium now um, and uh, this was in the early 80s so 82 83 maybe and uh, they didn't have any filters they didn't have any heaters they didn't have any air pumps mind you this was in the tropics so these tanks didn't really require any of those things per se but no air pumps no filtration nothing like that and they were very well established and uh, they got natural sunlight from the windows and she had fluorescent lights in her office so they got light through that throughout the day and uh, none of the tanks had any algae growing in them they all had thick green lush plant growth like lots of plants and they had angelfish that's that's where i actually fell in love with the angelfish uh, my first love of angelfish happened in her facility because she had angelfish like the natural actual large uh scalari you know wild types that were breeding in some of her larger display tanks and uh, there was hundreds of fry and and i was a little child and i i, I was mesmerized by this and i wanted it and uh, my mom always says every single one of my apartments looks like her office within a few short period of time i will convert my entire apartment into what her office used to look like and it's not something i do intentionally but this is just something that always seems to happen and my mom says it amazes her how every single one of my rooms or apartments like i used to live in their basement and it's just like this and then this apartment this is i think year 10 now or 11 going on and uh, it's now starting to look a lot like her office anyways uh aside from that none of these tanks none of these aquariums had any filters even in his own apartment there were spaces that had uh that were designed to keep aquariums so behind me there's a baseboard uh, i actually had three 15 gallon aquariums there i don't know what size aquarium they had there originally but the baseboard itself had a aquarium stand built on it like a really nice i'll, I'll put some video on it uh, b-roll so you guys can see and uh, when the baseboard heaters used to uh, the radiators actually that's what they were called when they were functional these radiators would generate heat and there's a wood a uh, treated piece of wood on top which sits on the baseboard or on the on the radiator and it's built like a stand and you put your aquariums and uh, the radiator heats up and heats up your aquarium in the winter so there's 15 gallon aquariums that was right beside the window i didn't have any heaters in them i didn't need any heaters in them there's another one like that in the other side of the apartment also six feet long by one foot so it's designed for a 55 gallon tall aquarium and uh, there's three or four that are three foot by one foot uh, also sitting on top of radiators that are designed the same way that heat up that you can actually put an aquarium on so this entire apartment there, there's seven or eight spots that were designed i should you should used to have aquariums in on top of those when i first moved here when the radiators were on and then uh, once the central air got installed and the radiators were no longer in use so they're decommissioned now i removed the aquariums from there and i started using these racks instead because uh, they were not heating up the aquariums anymore so they didn't have a function but that's how aquariums were heated in the past so if you were living in canada or the colder parts of the u.s as well as many parts of europe uh, before aquarium heaters were invented uh, you had these radiator setups and uh, people would have their display tanks on top of those and uh, usually they would be right by windows so the radiators would heat the tank up and the window would cool the tank down so it was like a genius setup and uh, <laughs> and also you'd get sunlight from the window and people kept fish in these these were very successful setups i kept fish in these i mean my tanks in this apartment definitely had lights and uh, air pumps or filters and whatnot many of them actually i think <laughs> I, I'm not a huge fan of filters. Uh, the only reason I have filters in all these tanks now is because I have a central air pump that is using 80 watts and is pushing uh, several pressurized cubic feet of, uh, I think 60 or 80, 80 cubic feet of air per minute into my room and uh, it's using 80 watts. So I'm not really concerned about using the air. I have, or I have air just leaking everywhere, uh, not just like out of the taps or anything but like i just have taps open so that i have bleed because there's too much pressure it's a one horsepower linear piston air pump 
so I'm not too worried about it but if I didn't have that thing I probably wouldn't have filters in most of my tanks now if you watch some of the videos from the past you see some of my planet aquariums and stuff from 2014 and stuff like that there was no filters in them there was no filters in, in my shrimp tanks there, the filters that I do have in them don't really work most of the time and if any of the filters in my tanks stop working my fish are not gonna gas out and die if the filters were to fail I'm not gonna have nitrate spikes my fish are not gonna gas and die um, I can go days weeks months without these things working I do however have to say if the lights stop working which means the not the electricity well the electricity but the actual physical lights I would be in trouble after about four days because the plants do take up a lot of oxygen and uh, if they do not replenish the water supply the oxygen supply in the water we would be running into some type of trouble but aside from that I don't think if the lights can stay on I can turn off my linear fish and air pump and run a month without no worries I can go on vacation and come back and my fish will be still fine now that's where you want to come to which is uh, where you want what I mean by balance that's where you want to be when you've achieved balance balance is not something that can be achieved over days or weeks this tank has been established for almost a year now you can go back and look at the video where I set this up I will set up another one down below these will purchase at the same time I will do an unboxing for you guys with better lighting so you can see my face clearly and uh, we will set up a underground filter properly and uh, we will talk about how we can set up a balanced aquarium and how we can achieve balance long term in our aquariums and how we can come off of these life support systems that we heavily depend on to keep our fish alive so that if at some point the life support system were to malfunction or to fail your fish are not going to die and you have some leeway and some uh, flexibility to actually react and uh, fix the solution situation and come up with a solution for that system that has failed without suffering any losses I think that's the takeaway from this video that everybody should take if there is a takeaway is that to not depend on these life support systems to the point where if one of these were to fail or several of them at the same time that your fish are not going to die based on that failure so how to achieve that is uh, up to each individual person but there are things we can do and we're going to talk about those in the coming videos so subscribe down below hit the notification icon and stay tuned and uh, if you find value in this content share this with your networks and on Facebook and uh, help spread the channel and help us grow as soon as possible as always I thank you so much for your support I love you all I'll see you on the next video God bless.